Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vahography Talk, episode number 17. Today is a special one. Our special guest, one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Omar Gonzalez of Omar Gonzalez Photography. Very excited. Let's get this started. What's going on, Omar? Hey, how's it going? Good, good. You know, we have a lot of things in common when it comes to photography, you and I. I thought you were going to say being bald. <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> that too. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. But um, as far as like what we shoot, as far as what we use, you know, I'm a big Nikon guy and Fuji. And yeah, I've yeah. noticed that you recently are trying out or I don't know if you switched fully, but I know you're doing your Nikon thing too right now. And that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I think, yeah, most of your viewers are, are Nikon users, right? That's like your base is your. <laughs> yeah. For, for, for now, uh, it's good. I mean, I want to, I want to implement more camera, camera manufacturers in my video soon. Yeah. Good luck. And, you're going to uh, get a lot of hate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I I uh I'm mostly Fujifilm on my channel or was and uh thank God the people who are loyal they really like whatever you do. You know, they're there for you. So I love those people. They're like, you know, do what makes you happy, Omar. But then there's the other crowd that just loves the brand and they think you are so attached to that brand. So I still love my Fujifilm cameras, but some people can't let go like if I hold a, <laughs> a Nikon camera. So you you I don't know if you switched fully to Nikon or you're doing it on the side. Uh, you, yeah, you you were reviewing a Nikon and that's how you kind of jumped in, right? Oh, yeah. So my little Nikon backstory is I just to, to rewind a little bit. I shot for those of you that don't know me. I'm a professional photographer, professional Whoa, take two <laughs> <laughs> professional photographer here in New Jersey. I do mostly events and portraits and I was shooting Canon DSLR um, and then Fujifilm on the side. So I would shoot Fujifilm for street and for family and for travel and then the Canon 5D Mark IV for events. So uh, which I'm sure you the same story, like you had a DSLR and, you know, shooting events, totally no problem. Then I moved to the Sony a7 III for eye autofocus and the autofocus was just so unbelievable that I just adapted all my Canon lenses, but working with the Sony files, this a7 III files was so ridiculous. And um, through BNH, I can review cameras. So I was like, you know, I've never tried any of the Z cameras. So which one should I try? And the one that made most sense was the, the Z6 II. And I was like blown away by the image quality. Like, wow. you know, completely, it brought me back to the 5D uh, era. And, um, he just the files love. straight out of camera. Yeah, I fell in love with the files, like beyond everything. Yeah, I, I've, uh, yeah, I, I know you're really good with your comments and some of the responses you get. You, you We'll get into that a little more on your YouTube adventure <laughs> later. Sure. But uh, I want to know, uh, that's awesome that you're kind of doing, Ni or I don't know, you're in Nikon camp now. Kind, so of, kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what happened was uh, B&H lends me the camera for about a month and uh, I didn't want to give it back. But <laughs> after reviewing it, I gave a super honest review, which is like, man, you have to decide what's most important to you with this camera. Because honestly, if you want to shoot the best autofocus and you want to shoot birds that are like between twigs, you know, you're going to have to go with like a Sony A, you know, Niner or the, the, the A1 because the autofocus with this was before the z9 you know oh, yeah yeah so you, people are like which camera should i buy and it's like honestly it depends what you do now for portraits if you're doing studio work or i'm shooting on the street the z62 like it could follow an eye like it totally can do great um and the reason why like you you don't know if i fully switch is because i really haven't decided yet i've done a couple events where the z62 has struggled with low light and then peep my clients being backlit. And uh, I'm actually working on a video on this to kind of show people what's going on and some workarounds. You know, you as the photographer can always kind of fumble the camera and get it to work. But uh, I'm still between, um, you know, like the Sony just you just point it anywhere and it finds what you want, as opposed to fighting the camera that's still happening 
in low light with me with the Nikon. I so see I'm a Z9. like, yeah, I yeah. see a Z9 in your future, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I don't, that's too big though. The Z9 is too much really? camera for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I like tiny, small cameras in it. Mm. Yeah, man, I I love your street stuff, your your event photography, your oh, lighting. Thanks. So sweet and, and just soft and oh thank off, you. <laughs> your, your off camera <laughs> stuff is great. Your, just the way you present teaching on your YouTube channel is a gem for our community, man. I thought I'd mention oh, that. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah. You have this style where it it's just so easy to understand. You know? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I used to be a teacher. I used to be a science wow, teacher. So yeah. Yeah. That's and, fun. uh, <laughs> yeah, so I used to work on lessons and this was before becoming a full-time photographer, but I love teaching people. I love helping people. And, uh, for me, that was the, uh, YouTube was the little Avenue that sort of gave me the teaching vibe, you know, nice. How did you get your start in uh, photography and when was this? How long have you been in it? Same story as everyone else. Dad had a camera. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my dad, um, my dad was a big uh, photographer, you know, just family stuff. He had like the the little Yashica camera, imitation Rolleiflex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but he took a lot of large format film photography. And... Um, I started doing it in college, just shooting a, a Canon DSLR film and my pictures were just so terrible, but I always loved capturing, you know, like light. I have like awful pictures of like park swings, but there's like shadows on the ground. Like I always wanted to know what the light was doing, you know, so um, I didn't understand soft light and harsh light, but I always wanted to capture just what was going on. Uh, with the light. And as soon as digital came out, I was like early adopter of digital. So my first digital stuff was just so bad because the megapixels, it was like three, <laughs> three <laughs> yeah. megapixels and stuff. But um, professionally, in, it just, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, uh, what, how old were you? Well, you've been in photography, you had photography in your life, all your life, right? With your family. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Professional, you were saying? Professionally, probably 12 years now, I started doing mm -hmm. kids portraits. And then I had this crazy idea that I was going to photograph babies, like I was going to be this newborn photography uh, <laughs> extravaganza. And that was a mistake. Knowing what you want to shoot is important. Yeah. And I, um, I'm yeah, not a yeah. big fan of babies, dude. I, I, no. <laughs> I, 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 the reason I love babies. What's wrong with you? No. <laughs> no, I, I love babies, but I if I can't direct the subject, and you know oh yeah they I, don't listen they yeah. don't listen yeah yeah i kind of have to wing it so I, you know i'm not i don't have patience for that so i stopped taking those kind of gigs so but, do you uh, do um do you take on family portraits events i know you do weddings right right yeah yeah events birthdays uh portraits uh concerts because i'm a rock and roll guy oh that's to, right yeah <laughs> I, I used to be a drummer for a rock band yeah yeah and yeah so, i follow you a little bit <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's cool so, i was gonna wear a rock shirt but i don't have any so uh, all right. really i gotta send you a few <laughs> yeah. i like yours there oh guns and roses yeah totally um so yeah that's what i do but um your very first personal camera not your dad's cameras but your very your very first camera was what oh man the the really first ones were these uh disc films in the 80s they had i don't know if you remember you could load a camera with like it was like these circular negatives and then you took the disc to get developed it wasn't a disc it was like a round thing with little uh, like exposures oh, wow. little tiny you gotta like google it it's hilarious and that was kind of my first camera as like a 14 13 14 year old shoot you know photographing friends were you and blown then the, away <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know about that, but uh, I think my first real camera was a Canon uh, Rebel XS. That was like in the early 2000s, maybe, no, maybe 90, 93 or so, a Canon yeah. Rebel film. Nice. Awesome. How your YouTube channel is a big success, man. Uh, you've been in it for how many years started your was your first video five years uh yeah 2017 i okay. uh started just because like random just because i bought a camera <laughs> and just you just started was there anything you wanted to kind of 
do what your mo main motivation was to start a YouTube channel? Yeah, the main motivation was I had just left my full time job teaching. So um, the 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 fall before was my last, you know, season teaching. And uh, I kind of just was so involved in client work and, and shooting portraits and events that I kind of needed something else. And the teaching thing was like the thing missing, you know, talking to people, interacting, helping. And so I just bought the Fujifilm X, here it is right here, the Fujifilm X-T20. Nice. And Congrats. yeah, this one, this was, well, this is the camera I bought at 27, in 2017. This is what it started my channel, was I just started making videos, helping people how to use it. Like <laughs> the first thing was like, how to put the battery in <laughs> <laughs> and stupid stuff like that. But that's how I got started was helping only about that camera. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I know your videos are so unique and awesome. Uh, what are some of the likes of the YouTube thing and the dislikes personally for you? Um, it's so funny. People do diff you know, people do YouTube for so many different reasons. Um, you know, like some people are doing it full time. And so they're, you know, so professional, they have sponsors. Yeah. And, uh, I think like my, my YouTube journey has changed when I first started and I was under a thousand subscribers, it was just like anything goes in front of the camera. You didn't really think you just hit record and it was just to help people. And then as you got a little bit more viewers, you were like, oh man, I got to start putting out better stuff. So, so the next stage was YouTube for me was technical, like getting better lighting, getting better sound. And then once you reach 10,000, it takes so long, you know, for some of us to reach 10,000, you feel like you've arrived, you know, like when you, re you, you get your like YouTube button, which is great. <laughs> How long and did you it take a, you? How long did it take took you to me, yeah, it took me like a two, almost two years, I think, to get to 10,000, year and a half, maybe. Okay. And then it, you know, everything's kind of exponential. After you do 10,000, it kind of goes, starts to go faster as YouTube pumps out your videos to people. But I think now I'm kind of in like a YouTube crossroad because in 2018, like a year in, it was all kind of like Fujifilm and going out and uh, lessons and teaching the menu. But I feel like I've dried up that well. Like I've, I, mm. I kind of don't really want to teach about the menu system anymore. You know, it, it, you have stages, right? You have stages yeah. in your YouTube. And I never want to make videos that are kind of just, um, you know, pumping out video after video after video, talking in front of the camera to get views. Like, I also don't feel that that is, there, there was one video I regret making, I took it down. It was when Canon announced the R5. I did like a, re, a funny reaction video. Uh -huh. And it was just to get views. Like, it was just like R5, you know, reaction. And it was people, terrible. It was horrible. So people were telling you what you shouldn't have done this and this because no, no. I I think I don't I don't think anyone sp said anything specifically. I just knew what I did. You know, like you're a bad you're a bad boy there with that yeah. title and that yeah. you know. I I do that sometimes because I mean I've been at this for a year and a half, and you know I've been talking to a few YouTubers and if you use it if you do it in good taste, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But there's some people that do take offense. They say, hey, why are you name dropping just to get clicks? Yeah, yeah, Listen. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree because I did one that was I switched to Sony. This was before I actually did. This was like when it was full Fujifilm passion. And the thumbnail was me like switching to Sony. Like, but then it was so dramatic. Like it really wasn't my camera. I switched for the day was the joke. Like I switched for the day. And once like what you said, as long as you keep it lighthearted and everyone's in on the joke it's good but if you're if you put like tony northrup in your title and you're trying to bash him you know or or someone like another youtuber just to get views that's easy that's like an easy you know yeah that's so i feel like personally i told myself to to not do that and so then i wanted my videos to be just more fun like if i'm having fun making the video like i'm out shooting or i'm showing someone something that happened or hey it could be a lesson but it's something we're talking about together then they're fun and then they feel good and yeah that's awesome yeah, yeah. uh you have a 
you know, I know you, you, you don't really, well, you care, but if you do, I don't get, care. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm <laughs> if, kidding. <laughs> if you do get negative blowback from some of your videos, I think it's like, oh, well, you know, that's a, I, that's a good point. So right? I think when you, when you first start out, yeah, that's something you have to kind of deal with. I think this is what happened with me. Uh, since I became kind of like the Fujifilm Jim Carrey, uh, <laughs> I attracted kind of like, hey there, you know, all that kind of goofiness. Then people knew, you know, like I was a good guy, I was just trying to have fun, that you attract like-minded people. They're there to smile. And I think I built a community, like the core community. Like, I feel like we all have like a thousand people that are like your super fans, like your core. Yeah. yeah. And if they're like you, they kind of keep the comments sort of because they comment and they like and they you know so that that core keeps the negativity away i think people will be negative if they see negative right so if if the negative comments are coming that means you did something kind of wrong probably and so they start to snowball well you know what we're only human after all yeah we have yeah, our yeah. good days we have our bad days and if i'm pissed off today i want if i want to like rant Oh, I love your rants, man. Oh, <laughs> if I want to rant, I think it's natural to come across sometimes just to be yourself. Sometimes I might curse. Sometimes I might be happy and people should understand that. Well, yeah. One of my favorite videos of yours was the story you told about the guy that wanted you, the wedding client, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was so real. Like you had me, I was listening to you. Like there's no script. I'm listening to you. I'm there for you. And the story was great and you were real. And I think, you know, that that's what people want. They, I don't think they really want, you know, to, if they're going to follow someone for them to be fake or write, read a script or, you know, yeah. so. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm trying to be more real because yeah. sometimes I find myself sounding a little too robotic sometimes. Oh, my uh, gosh. If I play and also if I play a YouTube video, it's like, hey, guys, how's it going, man? Um, see ya. Bye. You know, like, I think that, you know, YouTube has a levels and I think um, people will copy and copy and copy. That was that was Peter McKinnon a few years ago. He's the one that invented that. He invented the enthusiasm in the camera to to make you happy, you know, and Casey Neistat invented the vlogging. That's crazy. But then the, the people who copy aren't as good. And then you have all these clones, and, you know, so I, I always try to do something if I always, I always have a motto. Um, what would everyone do here? And what could I do different? So like, for yeah. example, if a camera is released and I'm going to review it, everyone's going to read the specs. So let's either skip that or do it really quickly. And what else could we do? That's a little different. Yeah, you know? that's smart because, yeah. uh, I'm watching my older videos and I'm like, okay, now I'll do this a little different. Now I'll do this a little different. Oh, yeah. So uh, as far as um, anyone close to in the photography YouTube community, like that I'm you a kind of <laughs> go back and forth with, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Uh, no, I, I, I for the most part, I am like I'm one of those introvert extrovert, like extrovert mm -hmm. when the camera's on, when I'm with my clients. But for the most part, I have like one best friend, a yeah. couple of old college friends. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like they say comedians are like that, too, that their clown is on. And then <laughs> when the camera's off, you know, it's just very quiet and kind of. So yeah. as far as other YouTubers, there's so many that I respect and love. And uh, but as far as communication goes no, not really. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can count on me for it if you want oh, to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My West Coast connection. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so, um, Where are you me, in California, by the way? Uh, L.A. Oh, so, cool. California. And I'm near New York. That's awesome. Yeah, L.A., uh, near uh, Glendale, Pasadena. Oh, awesome. I don't know. You've been around yeah, here. But... I've been to L.A. I drove cross country when I was 18. And we, we went to L.A. and slept in a van. Went to Venice Beach. We were clueless, but <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I, I I live not too far from the Rose Bowl, and cool. you know, with that, every year you have the Rose Parade. Anaheimish, kind of. Oh, well, that's Orange County. Oh, okay, uh, you're more north. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're a little more north. I love Orange County. I spend a lot of time in Newport, Newport Beach, and you know, Irvine, beautiful yeah, yeah. city. Yeah, you ever but, do street photography in those areas uh, or? 
Yeah, I just started getting into it. I just yeah, put yeah. out a video about the X100, which I'm going to be asking you about in a second. But um, cool, cool. Uh, I, I, yeah, my main gig is events but and concerts. But, um, you know, like I said, we have a lot of things in common. <laughs> <laughs> totally, um, totally. So you uh, tell me about your photography. You do a lot of events, right? Yeah. Do you do weddings too? I've done a couple of weddings. I... I find that weddings have a little bit more stress factor mm -hmm. <laughs> than uh, what I do, which is the Jewish bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs. In our, I don't know how it is in LA, but in our area here, New York, New Jersey, they're like quinceañeras for the Hispanic community. Yep. They're a coming of age sort of ceremony. And they're beautiful. Like uh, the, the kid reads from the Torah, which is the, you know, like the Bible for them, the scroll. They read from the Torah and they have a ceremony and then there's a reception. So I'm shooting portraits of the family. It's like, since I'm older, these kids are kind of like my kids, you know, like I have yeah. kids around their age, the 13 sort of, you know, 11 year olds. So, phenomenal uh, work, phenomenal work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your work what, is awesome. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So the, the best part of my job is it's kind of like if you were a wedding photographer and you got the bride on a Thursday in her dress to do dramatic, you know, bridal portraits. I get the kids before the service because we're not allowed to shoot the service. So the luxury is I get to play with lights. I get to set up lights in the temple. I get to pose kids. And so I have my own little studio for like an hour with the family just messing around with lights so i love it i'm always practicing and uh and then the reception work is like shooting a, a wedding yeah yeah um i've been doing weddings for oh man a long time you know i showed up to a wedding once because my dad was a photographer mm -hmm. like you but he <laughs> same story like your dad yeah but he was a wedding photographer in my market in the la market there was only like five or six good ones in that market and i was kind of his assistant oh cool and then i started video we had a video photo package i would show up to the wedding he would do photo i would do video oh wow vhs you know oh and, no way on the shoulder yeah and the the, the groom's like this kid's gonna shoot my wedding oh. so i was 10 years old yeah so it was, oh, uh, I, I, I used to bring my son to the temple he would be my he would set up lights and stuff and now i mean he was he was like a four footer and now my son has reached me. He's six foot, you know, all the way up. And people, my clients who are are using me again because they have three kids. Just imagine, they saw him when he was tiny, and now he's like setting up huge lights and carrying them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very yeah, cool. That, that's cool. So you uh, doing events and you do portraits as well. Yeah. Do you kind of have that New Jersey, New York market like with the bar mitzvahs? Is there quite a few of you or? Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. We have a little bit of a circuit. There's like a triangle of areas in New Jersey that are, you know, to do these kind of parties, like these bigger parties, because you can have a mitzvah, of course, just like a wedding that's tinier. And I don't think that's my like, you know, like a luncheon or something kind of thing. I don't shoot those. I shoot the ones that are like bigger and more glamorous, which I love, you know, like they have decor, they have, um, so I wouldn't say I like own the market, but I'm definitely one of the better known photographers in the area. You're the play, and, you're a player in the market. Oh, totally. <laughs> Do you second shoot for anyone? Like if you're free that day or is it just your jobs? No, no. You know, um, I think if I was younger, I, if, if I was doing this 10 years ago, I would be, I think so much all over, like I would be shooting everything. I think now I've said this on, on other podcasts and stuff, like I'm enjoying the work life balance. I'm enjoying like now I can pick my calendar out. God bless. I can pick my calendar out where I want to keep my days free yeah. for family or for hiking or for going on a motorcycle trip. So I think I'm at that perfect age where I can decide how much I want to work, which not everyone has the luxury to do, you know, so yeah. um, I can no. work every weekend if, if I had to, but I don't want to. Don't want you know? to, yeah. <laughs> I know, I feel you. That's yeah. kind of the way I feel with the weddings. Yeah. Because I'm at a point where I'm tr I'm seeing, you know, what I'm going to do the next five, ten years. Yeah, that. yeah, um, yeah. What, um, as far as, and you do portraits on the side and stuff like that. 
as far as your um i, I want to talk to you briefly about how important it is for f other photographers to value their time and prices because a lot of guys in my market they start you know just to get the job they, yeah, yeah you know <laughs> they strip their pants down and you know what i mean <laughs> oh totally so it, it kills the competition yeah yeah so yeah. basically what i tell uh my clients is i try to sell myself and my photography you know what yeah I mean? for sure so how do you feel about the market being destroyed by these other guys that well i i always think this i always think that that those the people that are hiring that kid god bless him he's great you know he's awesome he's doing a good job you always have to think that those aren't the clients you're going for. So you can't be offended by what that person is doing. If they're charging 150 bucks for a wedding. Well, yay, whoever wants to pay that, then fine. Those are not your key clients. So I always think that your key clients are the ones that will pay for you because of your reputation. And you got to have the work that backs it up. I have photographers in my area that I think charge more get more jobs and their lighting is mediocre, like at best, but they are making more money. <laughs> you know, they have a name and people are hiring them. Um, so I, I know whoever hires me is hiring me for me because they've heard about me, but also they value the imagery, like the lighting, the softness They are, They want that aesthetic as opposed to, a, you don't want to ever want to be a work for hire. You never want to be, Oh, we got this guy. He's running around taking pictures, you know, yeah, so exactly. And you're the work is great and you're a really cool dude. Oh, so thank you. Your personality you. comes off as, hey, man, I don't really care if he's a good or bad photographer. I just like being around him. Yeah, yeah. Same with you. I mean, we, we could we're humans. We could read each other like I could read you. We could get a beer together and have a great time like we already know within seven seconds. And I think clients know that, too, that uh that that's not the person the 150 dollar photographer you don't have to worry about that because you're gonna have clients that will pay you you know the five six seven thousand for the wedding you know yeah my biggest beef on that is the newer people they don't spend time learning the craft you know they just go out there and think they're gonna have a good time they see their friends doing it and they're yeah. like shit i can do this yeah and yeah. they just don't put in the time to learn the craft and you're right Sometimes it's good to be lucky and brand yourself. <laughs> yeah, totally. Right? Than being talented. But, you know, I'd rather be talented first or doing good photography. Yeah, because you'll like, always find something. Yeah. And what about do both, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do so. both. I'll give you a perfect example. Someone, I did a video about uh, natural lighting, and there's a thumbnail on that video. And someone left a comment that said, I'm just leaving a comment because on the thumbnail, the one that says bad, that's actually the one I would I would shoot. You know, that's what the guy said as his comment. And the one that says yes, the good one, he says that's the one that's not the good one. Yeah. And it, it made me laugh because that's the $150 photographer. Mm. That's the guy who you shouldn't worry about mm. because he doesn't see the light. He doesn't see that there are patches of green under the face of the person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, wait, I, sh I should mention because you brought up a good point. If you're good, if you're a good photographer, you really have to price yourself. You know, we're, we're talking about the, the bum that is trying to under undersell everyone just to make money. But if you're good, you, sh you should really establish yourself because then you're going to get all the cheap, junky clients that don't want to pay. You know, if you really want to make good money, you have to sort of establish yourself and keep raising your prices and find the market, you know yeah brand yourself you know sell your photography dress nice like some of these yeah. guys dress like bums you know hey no rock t-shirts no. <laughs> no i don't know i don't dress Here like to shoot your wedding, wedding. <laughs> no uh, if i'm shooting metallica's wedding maybe but uh <laughs> but uh the thing is that when you have the clients uh you educate the client you tell them look this is why you're paying me the price not yeah. only because of my photography the way I, you know, uh, conduct myself, my experience, you just sell yourself, you know? Yeah, and yeah, you're like, I got it. this. Mm -hmm. The I customer got this. sees it right away and they, they go, okay, where do I sign, you know? So, we, so just had a, we just had a blizzard in our New York area here and they don't cancel the service for blizzard. Like I've, I've done one blizzard one prior to this last blizzard and it was like a, a two feet of snow. 
And I knew the night before that I had to get there before the snow started. So I stayed very close by. And if I had to walk to that temple, I was going to get there. That's why you hire you, you know, and the same thing with this last blizzard is I'm, you know, God forbid nothing happens, but uh, you're going to get there. You're going to be there. Take care of your clients, you know. Experience, man. Like I had Yervant on the other yeah. day, Yervant from Australia, and he said something that was just wow. You know, he said, well, if the clients don't cooperate, like bridal parties and bride and groom, you just uh, during the, the park session or photo shoot, you take them to a bar, you feed them, you, you, you buy them some drinks and there you go. You know, wow. it's, it's going to, it's not going to cost you much. They're going to appreciate you. They're going to go, wow, the photographer's buying us lunch and drinks. He, he, he actually toasts. That's with amazing. The oh my God. That's he, he toast. And then it's, he's, and then they're his, you know, after that. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, okay, Yermont, now, yeah, only yeah. needs two seconds to, to, to get you, but oh, yes. yeah, that's awesome. I, yeah. I don't know if I could do that with a 13 year old, but no, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, well, if you're, yeah, bridal party, wedding, you know, stuff like that. We know uh, what I, I, I could translate it to family for those of you that are family shooters is you can't start shooting right away with your camera. You kind of have to like play with the kids or be with the kids and relate to them. And I think with kids, you either have it or you don't. Because kids, you know how like we could relate seven seconds, a kid looks at you and within two seconds, they're either curious about you or they, they're going to hide behind mom's leg. Yeah. So I, I was a kid whisperer. I can, I can, I don't look at the kid. I talk to mom and I'm goofy with mom. So the kid's interested, you know, and then the kid wants to be with mom and, you know, Hey, 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 you know, like, yeah, so. right. Yeah. You do, uh, your bar mitzvahs and, and events. They're usually what about 13 14 yeah 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 13 so yeah I'm, I'm surprised with kids these days they grow up so fast true true they are just wow you know you talk yeah. about things like wow what when i was 13 i was playing nintendo oh yeah yeah i was a so, big skateboarder yeah <laughs> oh really All right. yeah yeah big That's Hosoi, cool. uh Hosoi mark gonzalez fan oh nice yeah you shoot skateboarders or you <laughs> Uh, no, no. Only if they're on the street and I'm doing street photography. I always love watching them. You could do, you, you used to skate, you say? Oh, yeah. I was so a big you, skater. Are you still good with it? Like, can you? It's so funny. I, I posted one thing, a slow motion ollie that I did. It was like three feet high. And I was like, dad skills. And everyone went nuts. Like, oh my gosh. So yeah, I could probably still ollie if I, but I'd have to stretch for like two hours. <laughs> Yeah, be careful, man. We don't want you uh, hurting yeah. yourself. No, you know, we, we love your content, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I want to ask you a question about the X100 series of cameras, because I'm I'm a, I'm in love with that camera, you know. Oh, the X100T. Yeah, Yo, I have the T, but I'm going to I'm thinking about selling it and I'm thinking about upgrading to the V. What do you think? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me explain the Fujifilm life to you. So there's some, there's a, uh, Fujifilm has changed their X trans sensor each year. Uh, sorry, not each year, in each sort of like model up. So they're up to the trans, X trans four sensor now. That's the one that's in the newest X100 camera. The one you have has a very special sensor in it that's also in some of the cameras I have here. And the older sensors have a little bit of a quality to them that the newer sensors have lost. Fujifilm fixed a lot of the quote problems, you know, like a more of a caramel color, you know, they, they've made them less filmy and more color accurate. So the, in reality, the better, the, the newer cameras are better, but I, I would think I would say test it first. Um, and if you shoot mostly black and white, you could use any of the Fujifilm cameras. But I started grabbing some of the older ones, like this one's the X-E2. Yeah. And well, they're what, up like... to the X-E4 now. Yeah, that's like 200 bucks. You could buy that, right? Uh, totally. So this one I yeah. bought used, and it only has 16 megapixels, but for a little camera, it looks filmic. So I wouldn't give up on that. I would, I would totally try an X-Trans 4 sensor first and compare to see if you like it because some people are going back and buying the old Fuji films. Yeah. That's what, uh, you said on one of your videos, you said, I like looking down when I'm doing street photography. Yeah. Right. And you flip the screen with the video. Oh, yeah. 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 Totally. And that's oh, what true. I really like. You don't have that. Yeah. You don't, no. this is really good. 
I love that. I mean, that's when I'm doing street, it's, I don't know if I want to shoot from a lower perspective. I don't have that with the T. Yeah. Yeah. So that's true. maybe buy both, maybe just get that one. Well, too. look, why don't you, what I know the T is great, but this, this right here is a interchangeable. This is the Fujifilm. This one, not, uh, this is the um, 27 millimeter uh, F 2.8 lens. It's a pancake lens that makes your camera like the V, you know? So it's kind of, look how thin it sort of makes your Fujifilm nice and thin and pocketable. And it's yeah. kind of like a X 100 V, but you have it interchangeable. You know, you can put other lenses yeah, on. Yeah, but there's a magic about just having that one option. Yeah, magic, magic. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> you know, that feeling that you only have that one option. And yeah. That, yeah. That lens doesn't come off. Fixed. And it is what it is. It's just a challenge. And I love that challenge, you know. So I, no, I, I bought the X100 original. Original. Yeah. Back in the day. Autofocus. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I mean, I love it. Um, as far as the V, I'm going to try to buy the V and just see if I like it. You know, there's nothing out there right now. It's sold out everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Same with the Nikon stuff. The Nikon stuff is not available. I was going to pick up a, um, a backup camera. I was uh, willing to buy a Z7 II or another Z6 II and they, they just were all back ordered. Yeah. I'm in the process of selling all my older Nikons. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to welcome the Z9 soon. Oh, and really? Yeah, I'm, I'm selling some GF mount lenses, a lot of them. And Don't I'll be making, it. I'll be making a video about that. Yeah, because yeah. me and my photo friend, we're combining our efforts and we're listing all the cameras. Uh, I mean, lenses. Yeah, yeah. So there's going to be a lot of uh, changes ahead for me because I have to welcome in Z glass. So uh, yeah, I would I would caution you. Um, I made a video called lifeless where something was irking me about my images and it's that they're too digitally clear. And what a lot of photographers are doing now, they're putting like mist filters on people are trying to battle with software and with putting glass in front of their glass, this lifeless look, they don't know why they're doing it. They just want, Hey, I want it to look more like film. If you look at some of your older DSLR sensor slash glass, they have a quality to them. So I warn you first, like don't sell off the G stuff until you put it side by side because your Z9 will kill it with those lenses. You know, the, the autofocus would probably be great with the 105, 1.4. Yeah, I have, uh, there's quite a few I'm going to keep like the 105, 1.4, oh, 200 lens, F2. Man. Yeah. The 58, 1.4. Oh, you're Keeping good then. That. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the 2470. Oh, yeah. The, uh, that's 35G. That. The 24. Agreed. G. Agreed. Yeah. Um, Can I ask you a question really yeah. quick? Yeah. So, one of my biggest hangups with Nikon is the implementation of how you go between eye and single. I feel like in a fast moving environment like weddings, I always have to pick single. Like, I can't, I don't have the luxury of of there are there are workarounds like you use the tracking you could live full i find that living full time in wide with the eye it just it's not reliable you know same here uh that's why i don't shoot on eye at weddings because yeah. i can't trust the system yet uh with the z9 hopefully i haven't tried it yet but with the z9 i'm hoping that it's it's more much more reliable i find it that i want total control of my camera yeah yeah on single I just have control where I want it. You know where you want it. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so my question is, if you had the Z9 that has excellent pickup of a subject, would you still use, you think, like the like a cluster in the middle? I don't know. I have yeah, to try yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, it. totally. Seriously, because uh, my Z6s that I have, the originals, I have a couple, couple of those, single all the way, you know. Single I, all the way, for yeah. sure, yeah. And plus, I mean... I'm still shooting DSLR, man. So oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Not fully. And my D4 and D800 is not going anywhere. They're great uh, autofocus and low light. That's the thing. And if I and if I find a D6, you know, in mint condition with low miles or D5, I will buy that camera and and baby it because the yeah, DSLR yeah. is done, and yeah. I want one that's mint that I could keep forever. But yeah, to answer your question. I don't know because I haven't, I don't put it on eye autofocus or face detection on at weddings ever. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm doing a portrait shoot, I'm in full-time IAF. It follows the kid around. 
And then if it gets confused, I hit the little white tracking box and just put it on someone's chest, boop, and it, you know, like a little piece of contrast and it'll, it'll wake up again. It seems to happen more with the adapting the lenses, but just the, the way Nikon has implemented that you can't set you can't live in a single focus point and then hit a button where I is activated. Mm. You have to switch modes, which which is like such a missed opportunity. That can with the, I think that can be corrected, right? With the firmware upgrade. I believe the new people are saying that the Z9 you but you have to map a button to change like uh, all your maybe change your focus area like yeah. that button just lives to change the mode quickly. Yeah. I know what you're saying about uh, weddings or bar mitzvahs where, you know, you, you have to capture that moment or else. Um, we're not saying that, you know, that's that technology doesn't work. It does. You know, the face detection, I, it works oh, totally. great. It totally works does. great and I love it. But if the pressure pack situation, the I pressure, need, yes, I need to capture that or I'm done. You know, the kiss, the ring, the, you know, that kind of stuff. No, and and I think the Nikon can still do that. My thing is when you you're shooting bef, be, like through someone's arm, like something's happening and you see a moment and like someone's arm is like a little triangle that's cool, like all of a sudden it it picks up the arm oh, yeah. oh, or yeah. it it's like it, come on, you know. So so I find that <laughs> I with the Sony, I found it so much easier to be in a the Sony always picks the right for me. It always seems to pick the right subject, but I also had the eye autofocus available like if i was going to shoot through the arm it would find the eye it wouldn't get confused yeah so that's why i told like we started this conversation like am i switching i'm waiting i'm waiting to see if there's something between the z62 and the z9 that has not arrived yeah, <laughs> yeah i guess it depends on your situation like you said about the triangle through an elbow or something um through an arm or through yeah with me it's like wedding veils and eyes oh, yeah 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 that yeah. separation uh it's ch it's challenging sometimes and you know what sometimes with dslrs even i like to just manually focus that real quick you have to i mean yeah. there's so many workarounds i put on the z62 as emergencies one of them being put the camera in manual and my biggest thing was backlit low light faces forget it <laughs> yeah well you know I, it's getting better and better yeah and yeah yeah i think it's... i'm switching at a, a tough time i think they're not there yet they need like three more years two three more years to to really be like whoosh, got everything yeah worked out well i'll tell you right now that when i upgraded my firmware for the original z6 the autofocus improved so you say you have a z62 z62 yeah okay. yeah we've been Wait waiting for uh <laughs> The new firmware is going to really ramp that camera. Ooh, I haven't seen an, any official, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, it will. It'll come. And uh, just, I mean, it's not going to be no X Speed 7 with the Z9, but, you know, it's going to improve it because my Z6 original was vastly improved with that. That's cool. That's cool. So, uh, what's the future of Omar Gonzalez photography, whether I'll be it's YouTube? In space. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. For now, I'm going to continue doing what I do, which is uh, try to bring you uh, knowledge and try to bring you uh, a little bit of fun and just mainly talk photography. Uh, I am, you know, it's so funny. I've talked about this before, but I think I talked about it with, with Troy that, uh, it, you, you know, the YouTube algorithm is like it punishes you if you try to do something different. So you're always juggling. Do I keep doing the same? And do you, if you throw something completely out of left field, uh, you know, your views will tank. So that's kind of where I am with this year is it's still, of course, photography and everything. But for example, I've been filming a pizza recipe that <laughs> that I love. I make pizza at home that it's sort of sitting on the hard drive kind of thing, you know? Yeah, so. I, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, I've started a series on my channel about weight loss. Because yeah, I yeah. have a challenge that I'm doing. I have to lose weight and get in shape. And I feel like those videos don't get love. You no, know? they won't. Like, they shit. won't. And it's not your fault. You know, it's like the core people that, that are with you, they'll watch those. But it's the, the algorithm is just, it's relentless. It's like, damn, dude, I'm spitting knowledge that's life-changing <laughs> here. Forget a lens review right now. I want to better your life. Motivate oh, me. Oh, forget it. You. 
<laughs> yeah, if you mention a lens, it's like the whole, all these like the roaches come out of nowhere who have never seen you before, you know? Uh, that, that's why I like to mix the both. Of, like if I'm doing my uh, Vahography challenge videos, it's, uh, I want to mix, I want to put in some photo photography in it. Yeah, Just yeah, so yeah. people will stay engaged and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's, it's for motivating me because I need to do it. And I think if I put myself out there, I have to do it now, you know? What I yeah, mean? totally. So like, totally. Um, I love what you said about the 2470 f4. What you said about, you know, that lens is awesome and I regret buying the 28. And it, you know, reinforced my decision not to get the 28Z. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll sell yeah. you mine. $2,000 fresh. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll let you know because I'm still revamping my setup. And, uh, but, yeah, it, listen, if you have the Z9, I think it will be more uh, proportional and, and uh, great for low light. I think yeah. for what I do, I'm trying to move around really quickly and light. 24 to 70 F4, man, that lens surprised me. I love it. Yeah. I love that. This, we have this like kit lens uh, thing that we have, you know? Yeah, it's small and it's sharp and it's, you know, it's perfect. I don't really need to it because when I'm doing 24 7, especially at receptions, I don't need a 2 8. I shoot no, at 5 no. 6. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if there's people who, you know, grab and grin, you know, you better not be shooting them at 2.8 because those people on the side are going to be blurry. So yeah. I'm eyeing a 1424, 2.8. I want that lens. No, get the, uh, get the 30. Uh, I, ha I have the 30, man. I have Same that lens. thing. Oh, I love I that lens. lens. Yeah. yeah. I find it too wide, though. Too, too wide. Yeah. Well, maybe you change my mind on that, too. <laughs> save me some save me some money man well i, I haven't yeah. tried the other guy but i think if uh for what i do the uh, when i do dramatic dance photos and i'm really close that 14 to 30 is awesome but one lens you need to get or maybe you have it the 105z mc macro i you... have not that's a 28 though i don't uh i'm sorry i'm a 1.4 guy <laughs> <laughs> no man if you do detail shots at events rings or whatever oh yeah man. yeah because i i find using a mirrorless camera for for macro work is so helpful and, and, and easier totally because you, you move see the camera it. out of focus yeah oh, yeah my God. f22 because i shoot all that stuff at f22 f20 that's you know, crazy rings and stuff all right man let's conclude this with some rapid fire questions oh gosh here we go all right because uh i always do this at the end <laughs> i hopefully i picked out some good ones but um let's go you ready i'm ready all right favorite focal length uh 50. Hmm. interesting <laughs> uh nice uh dream lens one lens any manufacturer dream the dream that i don't own uh okay both the dream lens. one that you own and one that you wish okay you so found. the own is the 105 1.4 that's the best portrait lens i've ever used by far uh, because it does great full body with bokeh, but like clear, and it can also do headshots pretty good. A hundred is great. That's my go-to for a headshot. A one thirty-five is not great for headshot for me. Hundred is the sweet spot. Eighty-five to me is boring. So wait, wait, wait. One hundred five E, right? A G, baby. No, 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 no. The one hundred five oh. one four. Yeah, that stubby guy. The E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. E, so it's called an E. It's an E. It's, so. It's, that lens, according to Theoria, is junk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Wait, the angry guy. Wait, is it? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, it's E. I Oops. It. Are you okay? <laughs> hopefully you didn't break. I, I heard you got a new printer, so hopefully you didn't <laughs> Hold on, I can't it. hear you. I just dropped the best lens ever. No, it's still serious? good. It's a tank. Yeah, yeah, it fell. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's good. It's good. Uh... This is this is an E lens, this guy? Yep. Hold on. 105E. Look, right next uh, to the four. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I hope you I'm didn't learning. break it. Then you're gonna blame me. Yeah, yeah. Listen. And I'm gonna be like public any number one for you. I don't wanna <laughs> do that. Because we got off on such a good start. I just don't wanna be that <laughs> no, guy. No, it's good, it's good. And then a dream lens really, um, the one thing I'm getting into right now is more wildlife and bird, like for that sort of work life balance, like being out in nature. So a dream lens would really be a compact, very long, like 500, like the 500 PF or this new Z that came out, this 400 thing. Ooh, 14,000. Yeah, totally. So if someone's giving it to me, I'll take it. 
uh, you'll really appreciate my next purchase. Uh, I don't want to say anything, but uh, yeah, yeah, leave just... it for the channel because okay, that right okay, there's okay, views. Okay. That's views, all right. baby. Uh, all, right, all right, you, <laughs> you need the what? thumbnail of the box. Like, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. <laughs> anyway, um, that's awesome. Yeah, 105. And by the way, Theoria is the angry guy. Which, oh yeah, yeah. The photographer, yeah. He's, you know, he's a smart guy. The guy is smart. I've met him. Yeah, he is. He is he's pretty smart. Really... It's just a little quirky. That's all. That's all good. You know, <laughs> portrait session with anyone in the world. Ooh, good one. Portrait session with anyone in the world. Maybe uh, who's the um? Living. Oh, okay. Maybe Dave Matthews. I'm a big Dave Matthews fan, and I just find him so interesting. He gives back to the community. He seems like a really great guy. So I would love to do portraits of him out. Nice. Like, you know, uh, maybe where he grew up in South America or South South America, South Africa. <laughs> Dave Matthews band. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Are you, are you, the drummer. You know the drummer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Carter oh, Beaufort. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, that, they're tight. They're a tight band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but with you mentioned portraits, yeah, you would love to do portraits with him, but you will also love to like hang around at his house and shoot him <laughs> natural, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. That would be like behind the scenes, Candy. him hanging out, him with a cool white shirt, sleeves rolled up, you know, maybe black and whites on the beach or, you know, something that's, cool like that. That's and, cool, you know, I, I mentioned I did a mail on purpose because I think in our industry, everyone's go to is let's have a sexy female and the big debate is is it a good photo or is it a good looker you know that kind of thing and so mm -hmm. uh i think it's an interesting thing is like hey give me a subject that's maybe a little harder to shoot an older man you know yeah well that's interesting good point good point i like that <laughs> all right jared polin or northrup for lens reviews jared I, I actually i think jared is a good photographer i think he's knowledgeable uh he comes off i think for people maybe a little bit too harsh and stuff but he's from philly it's kind of like um, we're from new york like we totally understand each other um and he doesn't want to hang out <laughs> yeah 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 i think north the northrops for me personally i like uh chelsea because she seems to me to be a little bit more real but as far as their photography goes like i never get anything from like the samples kind of thing you know like to me the lighting sometimes is a little off or a little too harsh or you know so i've never I seen feel, their work yeah that's the thing it, it's it's kind of more like test work let's just say that like they can do in front of a light they'll do a test of a lens which is a little dry where jared will do more real life he'll shoot skateboarders and stuff i'm more interested in so jared poland good 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 well you do real world shots because they're paid gigs you know you're actually oh, busting yeah. your behind you know, that's that's another <laughs> category of your images. And totally. Thank you. That's why I respect you a lot. Um, up and coming, not so well known YouTube photo channel. Hmm. I had recommended a few. One of them was this kid named Stunt McCartney. Um, he's like just this young dude that did these little I was researching this camera. This is the Fujifilm X70. They don't make it anymore. It's a um, small version of the X100. It's like a pocketable. And I was researching and I came across this kid named Stunt McCartney. And it was like poetry watching his video. He has like a thousand subscribers. I got to check that out. I got to yeah, check yeah. that out. Bridezilla or coordinator from hell? <laughs> I would say I Which would take a would coordinator really? from hell because the bridezilla will, if you can deal with a bridezilla that loves you, she'll recommend you to other well, here's the bad part about that. You have to deal with the uh, coordinator only that day. The bridezilla, you got to deal with them after. True. The post. <laughs> hey, by the way, those of you thinking of getting into wedding photography, just think about how long your relationship with your client is. You know, there are many times I'm sure you felt this too, is that it would be great to be a headshot photographer like Hurley, you know, where they come in like the dentist. They come in, you work with them, have a great time, and they're done. Yeah, that's, you know? that's. I love my clients, but our relationship is sometimes five years because we're working on albums and, you know. And then I'm pretty sure with your clients, when you do when you you do a bar mitzvah or what you know, whatnot, they will they love the work. They'll call you for their wedding, you know, when they grow up. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I've done so, siblings. I've done siblings. So, so that's Omar, good. I'm sorry, but I don't. I know you don't like weddings. <laughs> They're gonna come full but circle. But you have to shoot my wedding, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Bullock or Kim Kardashian? Oh, Sandra Bullock. Come on, <laughs> uh, Sandra, Sandra Bullock. Who are you a fan of? Sandra Bullock. Oh, Sandra Bullock. I love her. She's you know uh, one of my favorite. Not well, not because of her talents, but I just I'm I have a I have a crush on. I have super crush on her. I just saw the yeah. the mo- the space movie with her. Yeah, my gravity. Favorite, What's it called? Uh, the space movie. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, my Ooh. favorite Sandra Bullock flick. Oh, there's so many, but I like the one where she like some time travel there. I forgot which one. Terminator. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot I love, and. The final one, East Coast rap versus West Coast. No, no. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac or Biggie? <laughs> uh, exactly, Biggie, baby. Come on. All right, Biggie, Biggie, Biggie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite toppings on a pizza? Sausage. Ah, oh, sausage. New York, New York pizza. Yeah, yeah. I mm. I love a good margarita, which is plain, but sausage is always my go-to. Well, next time you're in uh, the West Coast, I'll show you a good place to get a. It's called a pastrami pizza. Basically, it's a pastrami sandwich, but it's mustard, pastrami. What are you West Coasters doing, man? Yeah, man. We we, we don't mess around over here. You know what I mean? I would love to get carnitas, like street tacos. I'm sure you probably know a good place. Oh, yeah. Here, man, L.A., on the trucks. (laughs) Hell, yeah. Well, man, Omar, what can I say? This was a a pleasure. You're a down-to-earth individual. Yeah, uh, great photographer, and you know. Besides that, you're a great guy. And oh, thanks. You, you I come off it. as you know, no bullshit. Same, uh, same. Good, good personality, and I enjoyed myself here with you, man. Yeah, me too. I had a great time, man. Uh, it came off very straight and natural. You know, it, yeah, you have that. You know, when you have chemistry with someone, you know, you know right away. It's like, hey, man, you know. But when somebody comes off. You know what I'm trying to say. Oh, Same absolutely. Seven seconds, baby. Seven seconds. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, Mark, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks uh, for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, this was great. Um, Mr. Omar Gonzalez Photography. This was Vahography Talk, episode number 17. And you can catch this on Apple Podcast 2. We'll be streaming it there. The audio version, if just in case you want to hear Omar driving down to work, you can go ahead and do that. And on the channel of Ahography. All right, Omar. All right. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks so much, man. All it right. was a pleasure. And you know what? Rock and roll. Wait, 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 wait. Before I go, your favorite rock and roll band? Uh, Foo Fighters. Right, uh, right. Old U2, first three albums. Mm. You like Foo Fighters better than Nirvana? I do. I do. I was I was uh, in college in the 90s. So Dave Grohl's. Uh, yeah, I love Nirvana. But af- af- after is when I started listening to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Foo Fighters. Cool. Foo Fighters. All right. And of course, Dave Matthews Band, but the older stuff. Oh, yeah. All right. That's a good, we good answer. We could talk forever because uh, we good start answer. talking bands, man. Forget good it. Answer. Maybe one day we'll get on and just talk music. I'm going to have some your... musicians. What's your uh, number one band? Rush. Oh, nice. Totally That's different good. genre of music. I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a musician, so the best drummer just passed away, Neil Peart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just God. He was such a smart man, but uh, I'm going to have musicians on here Oh, soon. that's great. You uh, should totally do that. I, yeah. I mean, it depends on my mood, but music, it's just whatever genre like i'm into like uh soundtracks from from movies i'm into uh just all kinds of hip-hop and 90s hip-hop and yeah i'm trying to get tommy lee on here man but we'll see what happens <laughs> i want to talk about his visuals because i want to blend in photography with uh, music somehow and yeah, see yeah. how much they know about the f- photo world you know interesting uh because i could rap with them with music because i know music you yeah, know, the drumming and stuff, but can they rap with me with photography? There's a few musicians that are into photography. Yeah, uh, too. sports athletes. Randy Johnson, the pitcher for Yankees. Oh, He's a yeah. concert photographer. When we get off Google, Randy Johnson photography. Got he it. was I'll a major league. He was a major. Oh, uh, I know major, him. Yeah, he's a, 
Yeah, you know him, right? Yeah, of course. Sweet and uh, you know uh, Aquaman, uh, he's uh, into Leicas. Uh, yeah, Nikki Six too. He has his own Leica line. Ah, cool. Like Nikki Six has a Leica camera. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, man, we can talk. All right, man, we can talk. Thank you, Omar. All right, rock and roll, man. (laughs) Peace. (laughs) All right, brother. See you later. See ya. What's good, guys? If you want more videos like this, rock and photography content, go ahead and check out my other videos on the screen and subscribe to this channel. Rock and roll.